Hello. Okay, so first thing, <laughs> I totally forgot that we had another like brown color, which is what I was gonna use for the basket. So if you haven't done your basket yet, <laughs> originally I meant for it to be 738. So I'm very sorry, I messed up. I'm actually, after seeing, I don't know if you guys are following my stories, um, I shared Giselle's, um, her handle is Alice and the Bear, um, and she stitched her books all the way to the bottom and then did the basket over top, and I think I'm going to redo mine tonight and do that, and I'm going to use the 738 when I redo my basket, um, because originally I meant to have it that color, otherwise we have this color for like one thing, <laughs> um, which is fine, but... Anyways, I think I'm going to redo my basket. So just so you know, I think that's what I'm going to do tonight while I'm at my evening job. Um, but anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, so today we're going to do the hand statue, whatever you want to call it. Um, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Shelly and Jana. Hi. Um, so... We're going to start with um, our gray, which is 748, um, and then we'll do the base. So, I'm sorry, I said 748. I'm at 648. I know what I'm talking about. Giselle made it. Hello. She wasn't sure if she was going to. So, okay, so for the hand, we're going to do a split stitch. I don't have a lot of patience for slit stitch because we're using one strand. Um, so it, you know, actually, okay. I'm actually going to use two for these two fingers and one for the rest so that these kind of poke up just slightly more. <coughs> um, but traditionally, a split stitch is one strand. So let's start with one. And then we'll do the fingers because I don't know that I'll be able to finish all of this um, on the video because split stitch um, is really slow work. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Okay, so I was just singing your praises, Giselle, about your basket. <laughs> I need to redo mine still. I'm going to. I just haven't yet. Okay, so I'm just gonna get out one single strand of the 648 for this hand. <laughs> I never work with one strand. Like I just, it just really, <laughs> really bothers me. So I'm gonna, tie a couple of knots in this so that it doesn't pull through the fabric because I'm using linen, which is a looser weave. So stuff is gonna pull through more easily. So give me just a minute while I make a couple of knots here. Um, because Take a minute to knot this like five or six times. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit of a knot. All right, let's zoom in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is almost like a back stitch, but not. So I'm gonna start down here and work, oops, and don't pull too hard because you have a single stranded knot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go forward a stitch and then we're gonna go backwards. This is gonna be hard to see, I think, with this color. We're gonna go backwards like a third of a stitch and split that thread open. Let me see if you can see that, hold on. Oh yeah, it might be okay. So we're gonna split that stitch open
pull things snug and then move forward again. Okay, so some of these places where it's like curving, I'm gonna go forward and then I'm gonna go down into the stitch. Um, it doesn't create quite as smooth of a line if you go down into it as it does when you go up into the stitch. So just keep that in mind while you're doing this. You don't want your stitches to be too big, but you also don't want to drive yourself crazy um, with these split, splitting this thread, okay? So it almost, if it was a darker thread, you would be able to see it more. Um, it almost looks like a chain, but it's more tightly, um, hold on, I've got this extra thread that I didn't trim. Um, but it's more tightly um, chained together. This is a terrible color for this. I'm sorry, it is not very easy to see. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing kinda cause we're coming at this angle. I'm gonna go down. I think I might just outline this and then move to the, thing, the two middle fingers because I think with two strands it'll be a little bit easier to see. And this finger is a tiny bit that a little wider than I think I want it. So I'm just gonna go on the inside of this instead of right on my line I drew. And just plan on this taking a little bit of time because with one strand, it will just be time consuming. Yeah, I need to move over to two strands. I'm sorry, this is terrible to see. I think I might just stop here because I think that that's really hard to see. Let me grab my two strands and we'll try again. Okay. Once you get it filled in, you'll be able to see it better, but because it's so such a light color, it's hard to see that one single strand. Okay. So let's start again over here. So I'm going to outline one finger and then go and outline the other. And then try to split one of those threads when you come up in two. Try not to go between the threads, try and split one of them. And I am doing like itty bitty stitches to go around these curves. And then I'm gonna go like in a circle because I want to keep that shape really nice um, and like separate it from the finger next to it. So each finger will be like a swirl. Does that make sense? Because we want those to be separated.
Yep, this I think is a little easier to see. Maybe not a lot, but I'm sorry about this color choice. It's easier to see when it's... Okay, I'm gonna come up in this one and then I'm gonna go down in this past stitch. Ouch. It's easier to see when it's a thicker color, but... Okay, so there's around it and then we're just gonna go around it again and do the same thing. So, stitch and then we're gonna come up, split that open. I have to really concentrate. <laughs> I think I might let you do a lot of this on your own. I think I'm just going to finish this one finger. to do like one more let's see what one more row looks like well, I might have to do two rows in there stitch there it's a little hard to see isn't it okay I think it'll be easier when the whole thing is done so I'm gonna do that off camera but um just because I think let's see what time is it 1 15 I'm gonna do the base of it trying to decide I think I'll just do this part of the hand real quick so then because I don't want to do this line over top if there's still stitches that need to go in here oh shoot I have two strands though which I wasn't gonna do mm. I didn't plan ahead very well on this did I and I've got a knot Okay, I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's do our base for it and then I'm gonna think about this while we do that. Okay, so um, I have scraps of my 3862 and my 898. So I'm gonna use those, I'm gonna mix them to do like this wood base. Cause we wanna be able to see some of the wood grain a little, yeah. So I'm gonna use three strands of the lighter and three strands of the darker.
and we're just gonna satin stitch this. So I want the bottom and the top of this to be a little bit wider than the rest. So I'm gonna start there and kind of just come out from that base a little bit and then come back to the line. And just let the threads be how they want to be. So we've got six strands in our needle, three and three. Um, you could do more dark and less light. You could do more light, less dark. Use your scraps if you've got, you know, two and four or something like that. gonna save I think I'll save that last stitch on the top for after I finish the hand So I'm gonna end there. So then I can do my last stitch on top, just wide like this. So I'm gonna come, and so I'm like parallel with this one. I'm gonna come up here and then I'll go down like right there. So it has kind of that base top and bottom. So I'm just gonna pull that out of my way. Okay, so if you want to stick around, um, I'm gonna keep doing a split stitch. Um, for like another 20 minutes and see how far I can get. But if you're bored of that already, <laughs> feel free to get out of here. Um, so I'm gonna finish the finger, the other finger first, and then I'll move on to the rest of the hand because I think that the finger is gonna be a little bit easier to see on camera. But I don't wanna keep people if they don't want to watch me stitch this whole thing, so. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep going like I was. So I'm gonna start over here and go all the way around and outline it and then start filling it in. Also, is anyone else so excited January is over? I feel like it's like the longest month of the year. And there's like no fun holidays. There's no, like, it's just like cold and blah. I'm just really excited it's over. We were sick for like two weeks of it, so it's... Roman? What, what are you doing? Sounds like he's got something metal in there. Uh, do we eat? Oh, okay, you can play with those, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bud. I don't know. You're done with them? No. I do it, I do it away. Okay, honey, you can go play. That's fine. No, I, I put my Yes, I live in, in Michigan and haven't seen our grass in far too long. I put my aunt in. Okay, honey. Um, yeah, I can see our grass. Like, we don't have snow, but it's just, like, dead, and it's so cold. I think it, I wonder if I might be less frustrated if we had snow. I don't know. It's just, like, it's too cold, like, it's sunny and freezing. I'm in 
am I Michigan also? We're getting ready for our first winter storm where I am. <laughs> We've had a couple good storms, but um, it, the snow doesn't stick around. I'm interested to see how, because Groundhog's Day, is it tomorrow? I don't remember when Groundhog's Day is. Seven to 14 inches, holy cow. I would not be mad about snow. I actually, I really like snow. I just, I get sick of like the really cold, The, it's just like really cold and like for no reason like if it's gonna be cold like give me snow at least then we can like go sledding or but who wants to walk around in just like the freezing cold I don't okay I'm actually thinking we might need to go back and outline this in another color I'm wondering if that would help I love a big snowstorm once a year yes I like it a couple times a year. <laughs> I'm in Utah. We're supposed to have the greatest snow on earth. But this year has just been. And last year. It was really dry last year. Yes, Groundhog Day is tomorrow. Okay, that's what I thought. I knew it was coming up if it wasn't already here. my needle minder I guess I could zoom back in on this huh see it's just like slow work I don't people that like thread paint and stuff I'm always so impressed because I just think it is so time consuming. Like if I had three or four strands on this needle, like we would have been done with this whole hand. Okay, so there's our fingers. So let me cut this off and then we'll get out our single strand for the rest of the hand. I'm in North Carolina, we get two and a half we got two and a half inches last week and the city shut down. <laughs> oh my gosh. We would, like, we rarely even get snow days if we get, like, a whole foot of snow. But yeah, for sure. Like, if you guys aren't, right, like, you don't get snow. So then when you do, it's, like, a big problem. But yeah, we would never, two and a half inches is, like, nothing. Haley, did you grow up with snow or did you move did you move to North Carolina or is that like normal for you? side because I've got that outlined and then if I want to keep like with that direction or just because I think right here I'll go straight I think the fingers kind of keep that curve and then move to straight down here I've been in North Carolina my whole life I think I've seen I think I've seen snow less than 10 times oh my gosh that's so crazy just because like <laughs> I grew up in Utah, like we just have all the snow. So when people are like, oh yeah, I don't, we don't know about snow. We don't do snow. I'm like, ah! 
Like, I grew up sledding and building snowmen, and it's always so strange to me. But, I, I mean, I was born and raised in Utah. I've never lived outside Utah. But snow as kids was like... So did your kids love the snow, or were they like, nope, we're staying inside? One thread is so hard. <laughs> it's not that it's hard, it's just like, it's time consuming. And I don't mind time consuming if it like fills space a little faster, like that sheaf stitch, like that was time consuming, but I felt like it was a reasonable time consuming thing. Easton is too. He loves the snow. After 20 minutes getting dressed, he is ready to come in after five minutes. Yes. Yes. My kids do that too. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, my kids totally do that. And they're used to the snow. Like we do, we do snow stuff. Like they have snow suits and boots and coats and gloves and getting kids ready for the snow is absolutely a pain our fix lasted about 30 minutes before tears and complaining <laughs> 30 minutes is pretty good if I can get my kids to go play in the snow for 30 minutes I call that a win unless we're like out doing something like if we go sledding or something we can last a little longer but like 30 minutes in the yard is, is pretty good. Used to work at a preschool trying to get 20 plus kids ready. I, every, I so why even want to go out it takes forever and they miss most of recess. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine getting a bunch of kids ready for the snow. Like my older kids can get ready themselves. I mean, I help like my, I don't, oh, there we go. 20 plus kids ready. I don't even want to go out it takes forever. Yeah. Um, the only kid I have to help anymore is my four-year-old, like my seven-year-old can do most of it herself. Like I help her put on gloves or something, but you're fine. But yeah, getting kids ready to go out in the snow is like mind-numbing because you know that they're going to want to come in. Starting to just get lazy and just like stitch wherever I want in here. Instead of sticking with my plan. When they came, come in, they kick and throw everything everywhere. Oh, yeah. Our kids come in to like a mudroom type situation and just drop everything in there. And then I have to go in and like hang everything up and oh, it's exhausting. Judd. Roman's in there crying about something. Oh. I knew this was going to be long, but I 
guys sick of watching me do this yet? <sighs> so what one finger and some of this part has taken us 13 minutes <laughs> it's not my favorite way to embroider I think this is the first time I've ever done split stitch on a stitch along because I know that I don't love it I'll add details with like a single strand, but like filling a space, I don't, I don't do that. And especially not at this angle, like I have to stitch kind of at a funny angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And it makes my shoulders hurt. So, does anyone have projects going other than this stitch along? What are you working on? I have a house I'm working on right now. And it's got like a bunch of different colored bricks. always makes things kind of interesting trying to decide where to put what bricks okay so that row is done I'm gonna try and start splitting these and then going up a row my second wedding stitch ever and first arch yay I love wedding stitches like dress details and flower details and tux details. I love them. Okay, so I do want to remember that this is gonna go this way. I get a little crazy when I start stitching, just start going whatever way I want. So arch is in like an arbor or like a floor, like flowers in an arch. I feel like you do florals. Apparently I'm gonna outline this now. Don't feel like you have to finish one section before moving on. You can always go back. <laughs> That's my motto. It's a hexagon arbor thing. She made it for her wedding. It's super cool. Oh my gosh, I am excited to see that. That sounds fabulous. I could go back and redo my wedding. That's something I would love is like a fun, like funky arch with lots of flowers. Like I'm loving that trend. Do you have the wedding book, Amanda? Do you use that? Stitch People has have a wedding book that has like arbors and 
like fun background stuff and anyways it's one of my favorite books of theirs tons of good techniques like I need some magnifying glass for this. My eyes are starting to hurt. Yeah, it's my fave and it has a hexagon which made me happy. <laughs> it's so nice to have to not to recreate things like if you already have a base, even if you have to make a few like adjustments to it. Oh, it's so nice. I was thinking there was a hexagon in there. I was trying to remember opened it in a while. I probably should. Okay. I think I might end when I get down with this outline. I keep wanting to stitch a wedding with like lights. You know, people use like the fun like funky lights like hanging I keep wanting to stitch a wedding with one of those like with something like that but I haven't got any okay oh, my arms and my shoulders hurt <laughs> okay I need a break so I'm gonna call this done for today um, I will work on this some more and then I'll post it to my story so you can see it. I'm considering outlining this in a darker gray, um, which I don't think will be 100% necessary, but I think that it will help like define the fingers and the edge and stuff. Um, so if you have a darker gray, um, you might want to consider that as well. If you don't, I don't think it's going to be like a big, huge problem. But anyways, oh. I have to stretch now. Um, so work on that. Take breaks when you need to. Um, and then once I get that done, I will finish that off as well and kind of just cover up that edge there. Okay. All right. That was fun. Tomorrow we will do the embroidery hoop. Um... Tomorrow's Wednesday, and then Thursday we'll do these two, and <laughs> Friday we'll do details on the books and the flowers in the vase. So, all right, thanks for coming, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.